All right. Hello, hello. Okay. Hopefully, I know Facebook is having an issue with groups, so I can't be in my group today, which stinks, but hopefully you guys will find me here. And if not, I will post the replay. Um, I will post the replay in the Facebook group um, and on YouTube as well. So if you're new to my world, oh, yes. Cracker Jack found you. Awesome. I'm so, it makes me super happy. That's so annoying, but what are you going to do? Oh, good. Lots of people showing up. Awesome. Awesome. Penny, Tabby, Candace. Hi, 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 hi. And I see all your names, which makes me so happy. Okay. Karen from Alabama, Christina, Michelle, Colleen. Yes. Okay. Phew. I was like freaking out a little bit. Like that's not good. Um, awesome. Awesome. I have a really big afternoon plan for you guys today. Are you guys ready? I'm going to dive in because I feel like this is going to be like two hours. So I'm going to I'm going to dive in. And thank you so much for showing up and say hi. Nothing makes me happier than when I'm not sitting up here standing and talking to myself. <laughs> so, oh, good. One wonderful. Linda says she made a fluffy fairy. I love that so much. All right, Pam, Melissa, Jeanette. What is up, guys? Tracy, don't be sad if I don't say your name. People are like all the comments are like buzzing through. All right, I have like a huge thing planned for you today. Um, yeah. All right. There's gonna be four, there's five, there's five announce, there's five things I'm gonna do today. Number one, I'm gonna make a quick announcement. Number two, it's so long I have a list next to me. Number two, um, I have a special announcement about a bonus lesson for a few people that you might might pertain to you. Um, number three is I have a full drawing demo. So I promised my students I would give them a marker demo for those that are new in drawing with markers. And I thought, well, I'm not just going to show up with a, a fully made face before I do the marker demo. So I don't want to ever miss out on a drawing opportunity. So I thought I would also come on and just teach you how to draw a face from scratch in case that's something you've never done before. And also it's always fun to get more practice. So even if you've drawn a bajillion faces like me, I never get tired of it. So I want you guys to go get a piece of paper and a pencil because we are actively drawing together before the marker demo. So after our faces are drawn, I will be doing a full marker demo for those that are interested. And then I'm gonna be announcing the giveaway for those that sign up for my fairy workshop um, and have been partying along with me all week, I will be announcing the winners um, last. So if you can't stay around and you just wanna know if you won, then you can watch the replay and I'll also just post everybody's name in the Facebook group so you don't have to worry about that. So we have a big afternoon to spend together. Are you guys ready? Are you guys ready? Are you ready to learn? And are you ready to draw? And are you ready to have fun? If you're ready, give me a yes in the chat. I wanna know that you're ready. Linda says, yeah, I'm so excited. I'm excited too, Linda. All right, this is awesome. Um, yeah, this is, yeah, StreamYard is not separate than Facebook. StreamYard is just what I use to stream on Facebook. So it's, thank you, Candace, for helping out. All right, Melissa Corey says she's ready. Linda, Lisa says, yes. <laughs> I like Ann Ritchie, do it. <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome. That is awesome. Yes, ma'am, says Karen. All right, Sierra, so ready. All right, good, because we have a big, big afternoon. And I hate this because I have to like, all right, I'm standing, whatever. Get over it, Karen. Okay, so the first announcement is kind of a big, it's actually not kind of a big deal. It's a really big deal. And I just need you guys to be aware of this because today is almost like a day like Christmas or my birthday today. Um, because it hardly ever happens and it's one of my favorite days of the whole entire year. So the first thing that you need to know is that Awesome Art School is enrolling new students. And the reason that that is a big deal is because, uh, and I couldn't, I can't do math, but whatever 365 days minus 10 days is, is, is how many days Awesome Art School is closed for new students. So it's really important that you're aware that like this is this is an important time because I'm never open ever, ever. So if you are having such a fun time with me and if you love learning to draw or to paint, I'm accepting new students right now. It's a really big deal. So if you love learning to draw, I would highly recommend joining the Fun Fact Drawing Club. 
because that's where you can learn to draw from scratch. Um, I was, I was, and I'm not going to make this super long, but it, this, I was walking my dog today because I walk my dog like every day. Cause she's, a, she's kind of a puppy. She's a big girl. And I was thinking today about, um, as I do every day, cause when I get up every day, I'm always making new lessons for YouTube, but always my drawing club. And I have a mixed media society, which is where you can learn to paint. And I was thinking specifically about the drawing club because we've been drawing together all week. And I was, it was, I was thinking about what I was going to teach today right now in the demo. And I was thinking about the markers and I was thinking about like how far I've come. And since I started, when I opened Awesome Art School in 2015 to what I'm doing now, like the faces then plus the faces now. And then it hit me over the head like a ton of bricks. And I was like, oh my God, do you know what? This is super cool because all my, because my fun fab drawing club lessons start like all every drawing lesson I've ever created since 2015, which is like hundreds of lessons are all in the drawing club was like, they're also placed in order of ability, but they're also, so like we start at the big for like super, super beginners. Oh, I'll just show you what I mean. I'm just going to share my screen really, really quick. Cause this was like kind of profound when I thought about this, um, share screen. So, so, um, share screen. Hopefully this works. Okay. <clears throat> so, well, I think so. Yeah. So as I am, like growing as my own artist i'm like like my older lessons oh here's a great here's a better way to, to this is a, this is really cool in case you guys don't know you can go to campbellcarenartist.com and see every project i've ever made for all all my classes and everything like in one place so this is why i just want to show you this because this was i hadn't really stopped to think about this before so when I started teaching, which was like in 2015, those are my beginner projects. So when you sign up, like you can, um, you get a free book when you sign up, you get access to all my YouTube things for free. Um, so like these are like my beginning, um, these are my beginning lessons, but I drew them when I was much less experienced than I am. Like that's been a long time since 2015. So my teaching is the same, but my own ability during this time was a lot less. And then I have this series up. So when you, if you've never drawn before, you just start at the pixie and, and you literally start from beginning. Now I had a lot of experience, but obviously I have now six years more of experience. So I'm much better. So these are like beginner lessons, but also I was kind of a beginner. You know, not a beginner, but I was. So interestingly, and by the way, if you're a member and you click any of these, um, these buttons, it takes you right to the lesson. It's super fun. But so as I got better as an artist, my lessons also evolved with me. Do you know what I'm saying? So the Fun Fact Drawing Club not only like holds your hand from like baby beginner all the way to advanced, but I, I just realized today I'm kind of watching my own like transformation as well does that make sense and i never really thought of it like that so as you're watching the like as you're watching the um lessons get more advanced you're actually also watching my stuff get more advanced as, as well so as you can see as you go through like think we go from like whimsical but you know basic shapes and then we we go all the way to to realistic things so um and then like, this was the, the latest series I did, this Whimsical Women of the World. Like these are super, super advanced, but I never could have started here, right? Like I, oh, that's a wrong image. Um, like when I started teaching, I was just teaching my fun fab faces and it's taking me years to to get to this point and i just had never really thought about the fun five drawing club in terms of my own journey uh we do do hands and we do do some really really fun figures as well so if you want to check out all the different things that are included it's a it's an amazing journey that you can take it's totally self-guided you do it at your own pace um, but like, see how like elementary my little fun fab men are, and then we get more sophisticated, um, art deco. So there's so many here. A lot of you have been through my 100 fun fab faces challenge. This was on YouTube, but what's cool about it being in the club is that everything's in here for you already. And like all the reference pictures and everything are all here too. Um, and we do more than just faces in the club. I get that question kind of all the time. 
So there is, we did a lot of animals <laughs> and then now we're going getting into florals. And then this summer we're going to be getting into facades and urban sketching and blah, 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 blah. So it's um, super cool. And I just hadn't never stopped to consider that like the Fun Fact Drawing Club is kind of a reflection of my personal journey as well. And then that kind of is like, you can follow along mine to end up at the same place that I am after all these years. I just thought that was super cool. And it literally just hit me like an hour ago. And I was like, oh my God, I gotta share that. So anyways, that's my first announcement. Okay, does anyone have any questions? Um, Oh, good. I know. Urban sketching is going to be super fun. I'm really excited. There's these really cute houses in my neighborhood that have really, really like steep peaks. And every day I take pictures of them and I look like such a weirdo stalker because I'm taking pictures of my neighbors. Um, <laughs> oh, Tara Podvosky is here. She's my neighbor. She says, I pity the fool who doesn't join the fun fact drawing club. Oh my God. That's so Tara. You're so cute. What are you doing here? You don't even draw. <laughs> that's adorable. Okay. So, um, oh, that's awesome. Oh, Melissa says she's already in the mixed media club. You sold me on the drawing club. I know it's really fun. So the mixed media society, I'll just show you really quickly too, in case you're like, what is all this stuff? I don't want to confuse anybody, but, um, just so you know, you can go back to, um, did I do it again? I never know if I'm doing it right. Um, you can go to that same website. You can just go, Oh, that's not the website. You can go to that same website, KarenCampbell.com. Woo, we go so many projects. And um, you can, if you just go to Mixed Media Society, see all the projects. You can literally see all the projects right here. It's the same thing. And this is a great, this is a great resource for both my active students because they like, you can come here and figure out what you want to do. Um, so you could be like, I don't know what I want to work on today. Like, oh, she's a fun fab girl too. So is she. You could be like, oh, I don't know what I want to do today. I want to learn about acrylics. Like I haven't gone into that before. And it's the same thing. There's like a million projects in a million mediums. So this is open as well. And caustics, mixing the media for beginners. So you can go check those out at any time. And that is with within each within each um, medium, we're starting from scratch. If you're familiar with my hamburger systems on YouTube, here's like 20, I think I'm up to 26 or 28 projects and they're all done with the same layering system. Um, super fun, S season of fantasy. So if you're more into, um, into painting than drawing, then the Mixed Media Society is your jam. And I have like special guest artists who come in, like I don't know anything about gouache. So Lucy came in and taught us all about gouache and then we did a bunch of fun little projects in gouache. So, and again, they have um, like, so here's the flowers. So I'd like to do it by season. I started when I ended up having, so that was our latest lesson. When we ended up having so many seasons, uh, so many seasons, so many lessons at Awesome Art School. I shifted to like having seasons because that helped because there's so when you join you, you can do whatever you can do any of those lessons whenever you want. But so to kind of keep everybody on the same page, I now work in seasons. So like this winter was like animal season. And I just did a whole string of animal projects. And then now we're into floral. So now I'm doing only floral projects. And then the summer, but if you still love faces, there's like a million you can just go take. So it's like kind of like Netflix, but for classes. So that's that's all the announcements about that. It's just a really big year because I'm never open ever. So I just want to let you know that it, it's open if you want to come and join. Um, blah, 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 blah. Okay. Okay, cool. So, all right. So that was announcement number one. Announcement number two is that Anybody who does join before May 1st gets a bonus lesson. And this is particularly fun if you are currently doing the fairy workshop with me because I'm taking the girl, the same reference that we use to do the front face. So we're doing the front facing girl tomorrow is your lesson. 
in graphite. And then Friday we're doing her and she's based on an actual reference, which I can't find right now because my place is a mess. Um, and this is why I'm doing the full drawing and marker demo on Facebook today. Cause I want to show you ahead of time how to do the marker work. But if you love it and you want to keep going, I did this, I found. So I love this reference so much. This is a copyright free image. Um, and it's, but it's the same woman fairy. Thank you. Uh, and I'm going to show you how to draw her from scratch just like I show you how to draw her from scratch in the fairy workshop so if you want to come and join either the drawing club or the mixed media society early then you'll get this lesson which is super super fun but I'm also going to show you if whoever is here right now how to use markers as well but I just did this this morning I just had an idea I was like that would be such a nice fun little perk so if you're ready to join I have that little bonus prize for you okay that's that. So we're already moving on to the full drawing demo. Are you guys ready? Do you have your markers and your markers? You just need a pencil right now, but I'm going to do a full, I'm going to do a full drawing lesson right now. So, um, so I'm just going to get organized. Um, also, if you join, I'm, I'm so glad I have so much crap. You have no idea. If you do join, but uh, you can join. It's $27 a month. If you join for a year, you get two months free. And then you also get a free guide, by the way. And this is a guide to the entire membership. It has all the instructions, how to do everything. It has pictures of all the lessons. There's like room for um, there's space to do practice. It also helps you figure out like where to start when you join, if you're not sure where to begin has pictures of all the lessons in there so far and this is updated there's also gratuitous pictures of like hot men for no reason whatsoever um i have like some fun coloring pages that i put in there so um so a couple people told me also that they already purchased the guide because they weren't sure if they wanted to join. So they bought this ahead of time. If you already bought a, a guide before you join the drawing club and you want to swap this out for the how to draw and find your style book, that is fine. Um, you just, that's this book. It's not going to, yours won't be hardcover, but um, this is like a, a, the drawing Bible. This has like, um, this is like a, uh, a very good resource if you're new at drawing. Uh, actually, it's good for all levels. It really helps you figure out because there's like a, a lot of um, from scratch, how to draw forward, face, three quarter portrait and profiles in a bunch of different styles and mediums. So if you already pre-bought this one because you were not sure or you bought it by accident thinking it was like this only accompanies the Fun Five Drawing Club. It's not really a standalone. Um, and you want to get this one instead, just that's fine. Just please email me, Karen at Awesome Art School. Um, otherwise, you get the guide for free when you join for a year. All right, without further ado, all right, I'm gonna get some paper. Now, because I'm drawing on, I'm gonna be drawing with markers, paper is everything. I have to stop and let you know that. Paper is as equally as important as the instruments that you're gonna be drawing with. So you, it, it's really, truly, it's true. So I'm gonna be using markers, so I'm gonna make, make sure I'm using the right paper. So. I only recommend two choices. I recommend Bristol because it's super widely available, but it's expensive. So what I use instead is, I use, this is an office paper and it's it's a cover stock and it's by Hammermill. Tara or Jeanette, Salib, if you could drop the link to the hammer mill, if, if that would be super helpful. It's four cents a sheet, whereas Bristol is about a dollar a sheet. It's super cheap and it, it comes in a ream like office paper does, like 250 sheets. So it's like, I found it as cheap as 10 bucks on Amazon for up 250 sheets, like it's nuts. Whereas Bristol, this size is like 20 bucks for one pad and there's only 20 sheets in it. It's the same paper. so. That's my fun fab tip for the day. So I'm using this. It's it's kind of like cardstock. It has the same weight. Actually, I think this is heavier than cardstock, but it's super slippery smooth. If you know Bristol, then you'll know that kind of surface I'm talking about. It's super smooth. And that's because of how alcohol markers work. And I will talk about exactly how they about 
how they work exactly when I'm getting to the demo part, but let's draw a face first, okay? So what I wanna do is I'm actually going to, while I teach, I'm gonna teach how you can use references to help you draw better. So when I was learning to draw myself, and by the way, just in case, Got to knock out any stereotypes you might have about me. I was not an artsy girl. I was not the girl doodling instead of taking math. I was like trying to learn math. Um, I was a little nerd. Um, I worked really hard. I wasn't like, you know, I wasn't like a super smart nerd. I just was really into school and I didn't mess around. And I wasn't very artsy or craftsy when I was growing up. I was like super normal. I I was very intimidated by the art crowd when I was younger, so I didn't go anywhere near it. I wanted to be Jane Goodall, and I studied uh, biological anthropology when I was in college, and I went to Africa in my little hippie dress and Birkenstocks, and I wanted to study monkeys. Like, never in my wildest dreams was I like, I want to be an artist. Nope, didn't even enter into my radar. So the fact that I'm here, I just want to let you know, um, like I am super average person. I started with like meh, ability. And the only reason I got good and went on to publish 18 art books is because I just never stopped once I started. And it was just like the act of having so much fun that got me so addicted to doing it. And then just by doing it over and over, I kind of got good. So that's all you have to do as well. So you need to just have a few techniques under your belt. That's what I'm here for do things over and over and then you just get good. And that's why too, when I was had that realization about the Fun Pad Drawing Club be like a real reflection of my actual journey is because it, it is like, as I'm getting better, those lessons get more advanced and then you really truly learn along with me and get better. So I'm gonna switch my camera. I have these, um, I have this random reference. And if you notice, I have a black and white reference and a color reference. And the reason that I do that is, um, when you're a beginner and starting out trying to grasp the idea of um, of doing values and shading, it's a lot easier to do that all in black and white. And that's actually, where is it? So much crap. That's actually, I don't even know where it is. That's, <laughs> it was just holding something and I can't find it. Oh, here we go. That's the reason the reason why this book is published in black and white. It's because throughout this book, I am trying my best to hammer home the the um, the value lesson because all shading and all dimension all comes from understanding lights and dark. And you, it's harder to do that in color. It's much easier to do that in black and white. So if you can, if you can grasp that concept, and I take like forty pages to do it, like I really break it down shade by shade. I take one photographic reference, and I'm like, every page is like, okay, now it gets a little darker here, and then turn the page, it gets a little darker here, and turn the page, it's a little. You see how it's a little bit darker here, and then I say like, okay, now you're using this pencil, and then you're using this, and I really like took my sweet time to explain that, but that's why this book is in black and white is because that's how important this lesson is. So my biggest piece of advice when you're trying to learn shading is to start with printing out your, your photographic reference in black and white. Now, this doesn't mean your face has to look anything like this face. I'm not talking about making a drawing that looks like her. I'm talking about making the shading look like this shading. So it's like a totally different category or skill. So that's why when you're a beginner, black and white is a great place to start. And then you can have the color variation to be like, okay, now how do we make this into a skin tone? So I'm gonna show you all that right now. Okay, so, so, oh yes, lots of, do, 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 do. I'm just making sure before I turn away, I'm gonna just make sure. Um, I'm not missing any gigantic questions here. Um, doo, doo, doo. Oh, that's a great question, Charlotte. Yeah, I would honor that for sure. If you're on your second 
year of membership with me, I will totally send you out another book for sure. Um, okay, just make sure I'm not. Yes, yes, yes. Um, okay, good. Um, I'm just, I just want to make sure I answer any immediate questions. How do you use markers in a store bought art journal? I don't, <laughs> I only use them if like, Oh, who, who makes an art journal that's specifically for markers? Yeah, I don't. So I, as you know, I'm a mixed media artist, like first and foremost, and I don't use my alcohol markers in any mixed media application other than to, I will put colored pencil or pastel on top but those are the only two things that, or inks. And sometimes I'll use like, like a paint marker for white highlights. But yeah, I don't, I don't use them as like in any mixed media work that I, all of my drawings are drawn on single sheets of paper. Like, but these are great questions. Like these are all alcohol markers. And I just have them as standalone sheets. I buy these, aren't these so silly, these little, these little cartoon uh, lions. So I just, um, I do them all on the same paper. The paper is so that important. I know it's fussy, but it's so important. And because also your markers can't blend if they're not on the right paper. They just don't even work properly. So you don't get the results that you're super good. Um, Kimberly, I'm not sure what canceled recycled paper drawing block is. So I cannot say for certain. Um, and cardstock in a pinch will work, but it's a little bit too absorbent. Like it will kind of leach your things out, but it's, it's, if that's all you have, use it for sure. Um, 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 um there is a little bit of a discount if you want to do both. If you join through Patreon, the Patreon used to, I used to have both clubs individually on there. The only downside for that, Jane, is that you, because you can't get to the clubs individually on Patreon, a lot of people will sign up for both and then they decide they love, like one more than the other. You can't take away one. Does that make sense? So it's a little bit more forgiving if you join both at Awesome Art School because then you can cancel one and you still have the other. Does that make sense? It's, it's confusing. And I took them off of Patreon because it just got way too confusing. Um, so that's a good question. So you can join from either KarenCampbellArtist.com or AwesomeArtSchool.com. Um, there's information at both sites. That KarenCampbellArtist.com has like every single project, like just the pictures of all the projects. So it's kind of a nice way to skim through and just see. At Awesome Art School, you can go and read through um, a more like a, they're just, the information is broken down a little bit differently, but you can see both. That would give you the biggest comprehensive view of like what's included in both clubs. Um, do I sign the paper copies? Um, I, yes and no. I give you um, my good friend Jeanette who works with me mails out some books and I mail out some books, but everyone who grabs a guide gets a free bookmark that, and that it's been signed by me. So yes and no. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. Yes, there is a different guide for each book for each. Um, yes. And there is, <laughs> and I don't have my mixed media one, but um, yes, and the mixed media one is is um, 300 pages, it's ginormous. Yes, they both have their own dedicated book that goes with them. And everyone gets a free book, e-digital e version when they sign up, because that's how important it is. It really just helps you get your, find your way around. Okay. <laughs> I love this. I love you too, Donna Maloney. Um, da, 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 da. Yes, the PDFs are all for free right when you sign up. Okay. All right, I'm going to start drawing. Anna's ready. I'm ready. Let me switch my camera and we will get started right now. Stop cam. Um, God, please don't mess this up. Okay, HD web camera. Okay, woo, I did it, I'm so proud of myself. All right, well, let's, we're getting our drawing on right now. And then Tara and Jeanette are, are in the comment section. They can help answer questions for you as well if you have questions while I'm drawing. All right, so 
Like I said, I have this reference, but I'm not gonna be super, I'm gonna show you what I pull from here and what I ignore. You can take, you can take certain pieces of a photograph as a reference and leave the rest. Like, this is a great way to make things your own. It's a great way to get inspiration without copying and like ripping off a piece. It's a great, it's a great in a lot of ways to get this skill under your belt. So, um, oh, thanks for your nice words, Trisha. You're so awesome. So first thing we're gonna do, all right, are you guys, you guys better be drawn with me. I'm gonna be really mad if I found out I'm doing this all by myself. No, I'm just kidding. I just hope you draw because it's fun. Okay, so we're gonna start. This is kind of a heavy duty pencil. I don't wanna get so, so heavy. These are my favorite pencils in case I'll, I'm so bad about explaining my supplies, but I like these because they are, they're kind of weighted. I don't know. I just like the feel of them in my hand. That's such personal preference though. This is, these are both Pentel's graph gears. These are the 500s and these are the 1000s. These are really lightweight and these are really heavy. And for whatever reason, I just like the heavy feel. That's just personal preference. And yes, Terry. Oh, okay. Yes. Um, da, 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 da. So yeah, so these are what I love. And these come in a set. Um, and there's like 0 0.3, 0 0.5, 0 0.7, and 0 0.9 in that in the set. So I, I kind of like them. So I'm, I teach with these because they're broader nibs. It's a little awkward. There's like a camera a tripod right where my elbow is. So this, this is gonna be, it's a little awkward for me. So take pity. Okay, so I'm gonna draw an oval to get started. You guys should be drawing an oval to get started too. And the first thing you might notice is like, why the hell is she drawing 80,000 ovals? And the answer to that is because it builds muscle memory. When I first started drawing ovals, I was like all over the place. I was like, whoa, like, whoa. And I had like a million things. But what I do is I keep this part of my hand on the paper, like I like it just supports, and you can even kind of do this, and I'm moving my whole arm. I wonder if I can scale this back. This is such a wonky setup, you have no idea. I guess can't. But basically like my arm is, is like still, I'm actually moving from my, see how I'm not doing like my wrist is not doing this, I'm doing like this. So it's really my whole entire arm is using it. I'm going around a million times. And then when you do a million faces and you do this way, you start getting good at kind of doing an oval. Just practice like everything else. All right, so that's step one. Step two is, and this is universal, halfway down, you're gonna put your, you're gonna draw a horizontal line. All right, you guys drawing? <laughs> um, can someone answer Sarah, Sue Turner's question? Um, but the page, oh, I'm not sure what this question is. Yes, thank you, Jeanette. All right, so then I'm gonna put, um, I always do these first, and just so you know, this truly is what I draw every single time. Like, I, I never once in my whole life have skipped this these steps that I'm doing. It doesn't matter if I have drawn 400 faces, which I guarantee you I've drawn more than that. I still put these lines in every single time. So halfway between the horizontal and the bottom, you're gonna draw another one, okay? These are huge. Okay, cool. And then halfway between this line and the bottom, we're gonna do another line, okay? This is non-negotiable. <laughs> I give away this free guidelines on Facebook. Like I pay money to give these guidelines out for free because that's how essential they are. They're, they're like your number one important part, okay? So now we get to rough in, I call roughing in the features, okay? And notice I haven't even looked at my reference yet. I'm just drawing this from imagination. We're gonna do three ovals in a row and the ovals need to be really squished. They can't be like big. They need to be really squished. The human eye is like bizarrely tiny. We kind of in our heads give it more weight because they're the windows to the soul. So that makes us draw them bigger, but really they're, they're very narrow. And we're gonna do the middle oval first. Whatever size this sucker turns out to be is the same exact things we're gonna draw here and here okay 
So we're going to go boom. And we're going to try to make it the same size. And notice how many, I have 50 of those too. Just be messy, be sloppy. That's what erasers are for. Okay, so now these are about the same size, right? You're good to go. So this isn't exactly like if we're not doing realism, we are doing a fun, my fun fab style because it's friendly, it's easy, it's the gateway to realism, but it's much easier to draw than realism when you're just getting started. So on this line, we're going to do, you actually have a couple of options for noses, but I'm going to do a little oval. Again, it's not a circle, that's an oval. And then I'm going to do two ovals on either side. So there's going to be also three there. I'm obsessed with zooming in when I teach. I hate it when teachers teach and they're like way up here and you're like, I can't freaking see your paper. <laughs> and, and I would go further than that if this was pre-recorded. And this is why I don't teach live most of the time because your experience is much better if you have control over your camera. Okay, so then we have the mouth, which is also a squished oval and it can actually look just like the eyes one, okay? So now we are at the alien stage, but this is like the most important part of all of this, this kind. Okay, we good? Let me know in the comments if you're drawing along. Who's drawing with me? I want to know who's drawing along. Who's having fun? I got my soda. I'm settling in. I just wish I was sitting down in a chair. <laughs> okay. Yeah, Carol Lambert says, me. Terry's drawing, Sandra's drawing. Ladies, that makes me super happy. And Richie is totally drawing. Michelle, Dana, Lisa, oh, this makes me so happy. Anna Below is driving. Is it Below? Below? I'm the worst at last names. Maureen, yes. Oh, Connie Fowl says she's using your render journal. I actually love the render journal. It's super neat. Karen Bledsoe's drawing. Tyann, Vanessa, Marty, Melissa. Yes, yes, Monica from Ontario. Okay, awesome. Yeah, Sierra says alien is right. Oh, mom and I are following along. That's awesome. All right, yay. This, yes, Melissa, we will wait for you. Just kidding. You can catch up. Like, be quick. No, I'm just kidding. Just have fun. Esther says, me. All right, this totally makes my day. Okay, good. I just want to make sure I'm not out here all by myself just being an idiot, which is how I normally am. All right, great. So this is the <laughs> this is the alien stage. So it's okay, Julie. You're good. We got we started with an oval. Then we had put our guidelines in. We put the one down the center. We put one across the middle. Then this is my quick recap. Then we took the one in the middle and the bottom and we divided that in half. Then we took that one and the bottom and divided that in half. So that's where we are right here. Jan is working and drawing. That's awesome. <laughs> that's awesome. Okay, cool. So the next is a little is um, we're gonna I call it like shoring up the details or we're kind of fine tuning things. So look at all these lines one, two, sometimes I count because it's hilarious like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11. There's at least 12 lines. And, and I'm only showing that to you. So you really can understand like, that's how rough this stage is. But now is the time where we kind of fine tune things. So you'll notice with your own 12 ovals or more that there's kind of like a general like a good one will kind of pop out at you and that's the one we want to um, make stand out and we just do that by pushing down a little bit harder with our pencils so when I'm doing my like women I kind of like to come in a little bit at the temples this is super optional but right like on this eye line I just come in a tiny bit and I'll even just go do it on this side and I kind of make it so that so this is weird. Um, the way that I'm standing is super awkward. And this is this whole set setup is way over to my right hand side. So to compensate, like you kind of want this distance to be the same as over here. And because of the way I'm standing, it's really weird. So I'm going to move out and kind of put that that curve in there. And this is kind of interesting, but that same curve in you'll notice if you do the draw if you 
sign up to the drawing club early and you get this bonus, you'll see that this is that also when you're doing this three quarter portrait, you have that same indentation on your three quarter at the eye line that you do in forward facing as well. <laughs> Denise, you can watch this whenever, look, whenever you want because this will be available as a replay. All right, so we have this, and now we have all these lines. So all I'm going to do is like kind of sh sh what I call short up. So I'm just going to push down a little harder, and I have my the lines that are already there to help guide me. So whatever this looks like. I can't move my elbow where I want it to, so this is super awkward, but whatever. All right. <laughs> And there's still a million lines for there. So do your best. And now I notice like this is really wonky up here. So now is the time where you erase and make changes. But don't get too futzy. Nobody is, nobody's face is perfectly symmetrical. Nobody's is. Um, so don't worry about it. I'm just, I can't see over where I want. I, don't, I can't put my head where I want it to go and it's driving me nuts. Oh God. So still alien phase. We're good. We're good. We'll get past it. Okay. So quick, we're going to add a quick neck. So see where this mouth line is? That's where your neck's going to actually start. So we're going to come in. I like a thin neck. A realistic neck is super wide and gross. So I like to do them thin. So I'm, you start right at that intersection and that's where you, that's where I like to plunk my neck lines. And I always kind of come in and then come out. I think it just looks feminine that way. Look how un <laughs> look how unsymmetrical my face is. <laughs> so this though brings up a good teaching point, which is um, it's super helpful to while in the middle of your project, many times take your paper and actually hold it up out like this so you can see it. Because you'll notice, like, oh Jesus, like we're way, this is way, way off. And then you can kind of tweak it now before we get too far ahead of ourselves. Good Lord. Oh, and you know what else is really helpful? If you take a picture with your phone and you look at it through your phone viewfinder, you can kind of look, you can get a good shot of it that way too. Okay. I'm not gonna fuss. All right, so we have kind of like this. So now we're gonna kind of shore up the eyes. And this is, where, <laughs> and this is also um, where I start looking to my reference just for ideas, okay? I'm not getting super like caught up on anything. So the biggest thing I notice about her is that her eyes are really like, like, um, what are they called? I don't know, no, are they deep set, I think? But also like, I'm gonna say like doughy. Dewey is the wrong word. But see how her iris sits on her lower lid? It's actually pretty unusual. Normally it's more like this one where the iris, when that's the colored part, is kind of chopped off by the top and the bottom lid. So that's just something I'm noticing about her. So what we do is I start in the lower, can actually do one. A good trick and a tip for making your eyes be symmetrical is to build them up at the same time. Okay, so we're gonna do like we're gonna do one line, and I'm, I'm not gonna go over this line. I'm literally gonna build the eye within the confines of my ovals. So that's what they're there for. So use them. So we're gonna go up and over, and then I'm gonna not do any more over there. We're gonna switch over here, and we're gonna go up and over. Okay, and again, <laughs> put your paper up and look at it, whatever. And just so you know, like you're never, they're never gonna be perfect. So you just go, okay, whatever. And then you move on. Next step, we're gonna do the little, she doesn't have big tear ducts. So we're just gonna kind of do that little jog back. And then I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. We're gonna jog back. Okay, so building them up one at a time, one of them up, helps them to look more the same. Okay, and then I'm literally, again, I'm using the bottom of that oval, which is almost straight across, just to join up with that other side. It's very subtle. Okay, 
And then this distance is going to drive me bonkers, but I'm going to give her hair. We won't even notice. All right. So let that chenizzle go. All right. So then I'm going to do a really quick um, this is, again, where I like to use my reference for things like eyelids. That's the biggest variation on the human face in terms of eyes isn't the eye. It's the eyelids because sometimes there's like no lid and sometimes there's like a huge lid. So this is the kind of information I like to get from references. So kind of like, where is that? It's like, oh, OK, it's like here. And it's kind of and you know what? Like already it's higher than my reference. Whatever. Don't care. Close enough. I had the idea. I took it, I didn't execute it how I wanted to, and I don't even care, moving on with my life already. Just make that one kind of match that one. Cool, cool. Let's put in some eyebrows. So the eyebrows, she, her eyebrows actually start over this way, which I think is a little weird. I usually just go straight up from the where the tear duct is, and that's where we chuck the eyebrow. Look how over her eyebrow is. It's like in the wrong place. So I think it starts there. You can see some hairs, weird. So, and it doesn't really matter. You can do them close to the eyelid. You can do them wicked high. I like to do mine pretty high. Here's my little, this is my little hot tip for making fun, sassy, sexy eyebrows is I do like a check mark. So I do, I do down and then I make a check, like a check mark. And then there's like a little return at the end. Oh, sassy. And then you just make them a little, have a little thickness. So then again, I build them up at the same time. So then I come over here and I'm going to do a check mark in this direction. And then I do the return and then I give it a little thickness. <laughs> and then she already has some funky expression to her, which you can change. <laughs> you can make them go this way and really fucks with those eyebrows. You can make her have all sorts of look how sad she would be if I made her eyebrows that way. So you can you can totally play with those and that will change the expression of the whole face. Even if you don't do anything else, she already has expression. So that's a great way to this is why I get addicted to drawing faces, because you can do like 100 faces and just make teeny tiny little tweaks to things like the eyebrows or like a little bit uplift on the mouth. And it totally transforms that face into looking like something else. So that's why I get so addicted to that. All right, so let's do, um, let's keep going. So the nose, we're gonna do the nose next. Yeah, check mark is like a little super, little super cheat. Okay, so nose is, are actually super easy. So you have this basic little shape here. I'm trying to like zoom in as far as I possibly can. <laughs> what kind of pencil am I using? Thank you, Beth. Yeah, this is a graph gear. 1000 sounds like a rocket ship name doesn't it um so in between these ovals is like this little up space yeah. and that's where i'm gonna put <laughs> see bryden is messaging me if you guys love fairies by the way if you guys are into folklore i just started a podcast with lucy bryden called one scott one not and it's very funny okay at least it's a little ridiculous. Lucy, not now. Okay, <clears throat> so then I have these little nostrils drawn, and I drew them right between the this space, and that's literally it. And then this is where you draw parentheses. So there's going to be a parentheses here and a parentheses here. See the little nose parentheses? Boom, there is your nose right there. Now, sometimes I like to do, if I have like a ball of the nose, just, Sometimes I kind of like, and that's separate from this oval. We needed to get the nostrils, but afterwards you can actually draw the ball of the nose, which is generally a, like is a circle and that can kind of go on top. That's super optional, but sometimes it helps with shading later on. All right, so now let's do the lips. She has a really pronounced, and I never say this right, this part. Phil, Philtrum, I think, lip dip, whatever, weird shape. So I sometimes just, I just represent that by two lines in the fun fab style. So that also varies from person to person. And also the length varies from person to person. And that's again, more information that you can get from your reference if you want to use one. So hers is like super long, whatever, do that or not do that, doesn't matter. All right, here's this little, little, and then right from those lines, you're gonna have this little swoop. 
And then I'm not worried about the fact that it's higher than my mouth. Just, just go for it wherever that ends up. It's all of these, except the eye line is non-negotiable. That's always halfway. These, the mouth and nose can kind of scooch up and down either way. Okay. And then I'm just going to, I do the little dip and then I come out and come out. You don't have to measure this. If you want to be super realistic, it's usually about from here. I don't even do that. I just, because you know why? Sometimes I like to mess around with the mouth. I'll do like a little teeny tiny mouth or I'll do like a super like giant lips or I'll do really thin lips. Again, that's the kind of information that you can get from a reference. Just helps you with some of those decisions. So I'm just going to go straight across. I'm going to do like a super generic lip shape. Boom, done. Okay, and it's amazing how much more of a pleasant face you can create if you just have a little bit of a turn at the corners. It keeps it from being like dead face, Debbie. Whoop, just a little bit goes such a long way. It's a little bit crazy. Okay, we're almost to the point where we can erase the guidelines, but not yet. I keep my guidelines in till like the last minute, like till I'm ready to color. Okay. <clears throat> Yes, Holly, I'm going to have this available for later. The replay will be here, and I'm going to upload it to YouTube, and it'll be in the Facebook group. It'll be everywhere. Okay, so now we need to get some hair rocking on her, and this is why I don't erase any guidelines until I'm ready to color her in because they're all so important. So hair, um, hair, there's a couple. There, hair is very simple. I think it gets somehow gets really overcomplicated. It's actually very straightforward. The first thing you need to do is just simply choose a part. Um, and you might think like, well, geez, where do I go to find a part? And <clears throat> the first answer is generally, well, think about your own hair. Where's, you know where your hair part is, right? And you know that they're generally like somewhere in this area. So you just kind of pick a point. And if you're not sure, you can use a reference and use the references hair part if you're not sure. So hers is probably like right here. So I'll do that too. I want to use my reference today. All right, and then there's only two rules you have to remember about drawing hair. One is you have to come into this space. Um, the biggest mistake people make is they're like scared to go onto the face part, so all the hair ends up on top. So the hair has to come into the face area. So I usually do that first. And all the hair, so here's my little part mark, all the hair on this side is gonna grow in this direction, right? And all the hair on this side is gonna go in that direction. That's really the only rules that, that you need to remember. And then sometimes kind of the swoop. So this will go like this way. And well, this doesn't even have to go that way. This could go this way, or you have good at bangs that kind of go this way. But they're all, every hair starts at the part. Just like in real life, all your hair does start at the part, okay? So I'm actually just gonna go with these lines and I'm just gonna kind of put just, and, and actually, if you're noticing too, you see how much space is between her hairline and the hair? That is another rule that you have, that is a must, 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 which is hair has a ton of volume. So you have, to, here's my original headline. You have to go up higher. You got to do it. I don't care if it feels weird, do it anyways. Okay, so you have to have space here. I'm not even going to do ears. If you do do ears, you can go between the eye line and the nose. So like here. Here. So all your lines, again, this is why I keep my guidelines in as long as possible because you never know when you're going to need them. But that's a nicely placed ear. Is it super anatomically perfect? No. But it does it look right? Yes, it does. Okay. So then we just have some hair. And when you're drawing hair, you just need to draw like the mass of it to get started. Okay. So we just have the mass. So we don't need to draw individual strands. I'll show you how to do that with markers. And then I like to, even though her hair is like, back. I like to kind of have a little bit more flow. So I might come to come like that, varying from my reference a little bit. And that's when I said earlier, like you can choose to keep things from your reference. Like I will want to acknowledge her part. I'm going to not acknowledge. I don't want to take this part of it, but I'll take that part of it. 
then I'll make this part the same. So you get to decide as the artist what stays and what goes, which is kind of fun. All right, so say this part, now hers is kind of this way, which I don't like, so I'm gonna come down further and maybe that'll change, I don't know. And we can kind of come like that, but again, see how much this comes way up and over? That's not wrong. Feels weird, but, and you can always erase if you're like, whoa, the right hair is humongo. Like, then you take it in, it's okay. But, but it does go out quite a bit. And this is very unexciting on original hair. <laughs> All right, we are almost to the point where we can start erasing. So she's, see what a hot mess she is though? There's lines everywhere. Because yeah, this is, there's a lot happening, but we needed all those lines. So I'm gonna do one more little thing before I erase my guidelines and we get into the marker, the marker lesson. Um, and I wish I had a, t it's, I never used to um, like suggest using a template, but it actually is, is really helpful. Um, I wonder if I could use like my marker cap. Um, it's not the worst. It's not the worst example, but to make something, it's actually the right size. That's weird. Okay, so <laughs> one thing you'll notice that's super important about drawing eyes um, is that the iris is always chopped off in some way. So you will never see like the whole iris like sitting within the confines. It's always bigger always okay so the only so you don't see this and that part but drawing the whole circle initially helps you get the remaining portions that are correct and then the placement of that circle can change it can be right in the center like that one or it can be sitting like sitting at the bottom like this that's how her eye is in the photo that I'm using today. And the same thing, like here's her pupil. So see how her pupil and this whole part will be cut off by the eyelid. So you'll only see these, this portion. So pay super close attention when you're using a reference. That's some really good information to get. You very rarely see this kind. That's kind of weird. That's like if someone is looking really far down at something. So you pretty much won't be drawing this. Typically you'll be seeing this or you'll be doing something more like that. But that's super good information that you can pull from a reference. Or if you're not sure, then that's where you can be like, wait, what's going on with the human eye again? Go look at a photograph and be like, oh, whoa, okay, I see now that that's sitting right there. Okay? So I, so here, here's my, I'm going to use my, this is my Ohuhu marker pen cap. And it looks like her eye is sitting literally right on the bottom. Oh, it's too big. <laughs> it's way too big. That's hilarious. I could probably use this side, this side of it. I do like a template because it does help you. And I have a circle template that I use. It does help you kind of like, just make sure that they're the same size. If you're just starting out, that's hilarious. It kind of worked. Although she looks really dopey she looks a little doped up so we'll have to maybe work on that a little bit that's what i was saying when i first showed you this picture i was like oh that's actually unusual all right so guess what we get to erase our guidelines now Woo so i'm going to i'm going to erase my guidelines and then i'm gonna um i'm gonna switch my camera while i'm erasing because that's a little bit boring to watch and I'm just going to take a little pause and make sure that there's no questions I can't answer. So I'm going to erase um, her head outline. She looks like she's on drugs. <laughs> I might have to fix her eyes. <laughs> All right. So I'm, I'm using a banish eraser. I am obsessed. I just, I love it. I know it's on our Amazon, it's really expensive. I get mine at Jerry's and it's much cheaper at Jerry's. And I really, really recommend it. 
Um, so I'm erasing a lot. <laughs> All right, and then I'm gonna dive into the marker demo. So, she looks tired. <laughs> she does. Awesome. Um, yeah, necks are not that thin, but I love them. I love to draw them like that. All right, does anyone have any questions up until this point? She does look like she's on drugs. <laughs> oh, that's funny. There's a lot of erasing to do. <laughs> oh, it's so funny. I need to fix her eyes. She really looks drugged out. <laughs> I don't think I can leave them like that. That would be a really bad end result. <laughs> okay. So I'm switching to from my vanish to the end of my mechanical pencil to get in the little tiny, the little tiny areas here. So much erasing. That's another reason that this paper is so good though. It's so hardy. Like I could erase a 50,000 times and it wouldn't bother my paper at all. Right, Marlene, you were like, just read my mind. It, it, totally the hammer mill paper is like a dream. <laughs> I'm laughing so hard at her face. She's like, what are you drawing? <laughs> That's what she looks like. <laughs> we're gonna have to fix that. <laughs> cannot stop laughing. What not to teach live a drug base. <laughs> I'm gonna have to pull up a, stu a stool. This is killing me. Oh my gosh. Ooh. Oh, that's so much better. That was like the most awkward. Turn her into a stoned out hippie girl. I, I feel like she's already there. I don't even need to turn her into that. She just is. <laughs> All right, see you later, Liam. Yeah, this the replay will be here. Yeah, Tombow Eraser, right here, my friend. But this is not big enough right now because I have so much erasing to do. <laughs> um, all right. But we're still in the place where we have plenty of time to make changes. So good. This is a good lesson because I'll, I'll teach you how to where and how to tweak. All right. All right. I'm going to turn my camera back around. Yes, there is a special paper that is, <clears throat> it's a Bristol equivalent, but it's called a hammer mill. And I'm assuming Tara, that's the link there. Oh, thanks. You know, I was on, I've never, never do braids. And I had like three Zoom calls in one day last week. And every woman that I was on a Zoom call with had braids. And I was like, um, and I'm missing like the braid convention memo. And I was like, I want to do braids. So it was not my idea. I was inspired by all of these. It was so funny and they didn't know each other. It was like such a funny coincidence. Um, the name of the large eraser is the, the Vanish Eraser. It's literally called the Vanish Eraser. It's, it's magnificent. I only use this. Uh, it works on everything except charcoal. It's terrible on charcoal. I, I do have rubber kneaded erasers for charcoal work, but it's so good. And this is hammer mill paper. I'm making like a hot mess. I did something and I like, all right. So, but I'm, we, erasers are also important because, oh, thank you, <laughs> Linda. Best eraser ever. Yes, no joke. It really is. And I like, even though it is eight bucks on Amazon, <laughs> I, I would buy it. It's so good. I know I wouldn't really, and I don't buy mine there, but they're, it's really good. Okay, so let's talk about what we can do to make her not look like a stoned out hippie. It's basically the eyes. Oh gosh, I need to bring this in closer because I'm not standing up anymore. Come on camera. Oh yes, I did it. 
all by myself. <laughs> I didn't realize this is like a new setup for me. Oh my Lord. So Jane asks, is there a technique to achieve long strands of hair? So F, if you notice, I only have drawn four lines for her hair. So the technique is to just stir at the top at the part, like I showed you just a minute ago, and just go and you make it one continuous strand. So I haven't even drawn her hair yet, right? And always, and when I show you how to color it in with markers, that'll become more apparent. We always start back at the part and then just draw one continuous line. Boom and boom. Okay, so let's fix her druggy face. Um, yeah, Claire, you can totally, yeah, well, and the, you can totally do that. Um, yeah, de don't use markers on watercolor paper for sure. Um, and this, the shading that I'm, t she looks like a super drug addict. Um, the shading that I'm teaching you to, like you can do any which way. All right. So I was using, pulling from this reference, which is why her eye <laughs> just look like that. So let's see things that I would change. Um, it, I think it has most to do with the, actually the position of her irises. So I'm going to erase those. You gotta get her, get her away from that look. It's just bad. This is a bad look, you know. And eye shape can change, but most of it is coming from the placement of those. I'll just tell you that right now. So I'm gonna redraw these. The eye shape itself honestly doesn't matter. And this one looks, I. It's hard to describe how awkward I am at my table, but just because of the way the camera is, I can't be where I would normally be. For this so what I with the normal placement when I'm not working from this random reference that I just picked for us today would be actually just have them in the middle so I would just have like a oh, a cutoff portion here and then a cutoff portion here so like the eye circle would be like this and like this does that make sense and that makes her look immediately, even if we don't change anything else, it takes away the druggy look. Okay. And you can also mess around with her eyebrows. But also, I do have to say, a lot of times my, my drawings look super weird. But, like, I kind of just have faith that they'll come together at the end. And they normally just do. So all of this little futzing here and there doesn't really make a difference. When it's all said and done, it can look... It can take on a lot of different looks. So we can, you can also really transform her face very quickly by doing two things. One is changing the eyebrows and two is changing the mouth. So even if I, this, I'm always stunned why, just even having just the littlest upturn, her mouth is really crooked. Even having just a tiny upturn in a mouth can look how pleasant she looks already. She went from like drug addicts to like, oh, sweet girl. That's all I did was change the position of her, change her um, irises and then give her a teeny tiny smile. Boom. I'm also gonna, her chin is super un, un um, what's it called, symmetrical. Okay, so that's already better. Holy moly, my markers are gonna be smearing everywhere. Okay, and then you can like mess around with the eyebrows. You just play with the angles. So now she's kind of like, she's like a little what? <laughs> like it's like the littlest bit is like that all I did. And look at her, she's like, um. <laughs> right? <laughs> Like it doesn't take much. Um, so if you're a lot of people fall into the trap of their faces all look the same, start messing with these things. You could be like, hey, like, hey, girl. Okay, don't. I always do a thing where I start making them talk. It just comes out of me. Sorry. But she could be like, you know, make her super. That's not even that good. She doesn't even look that dramatic. We could even go more. But like, feel free to like mess around with this stuff. There's just pencils. Like, ooh, that looks ridiculous because they're straight lines. Where you can make a very serious kind of like supermodel eyebrows, 
where they're like big and fluffy little caterpillars are super in right now. Caliper brows, like I like to call them. Where they're really thick and gigundo. You know, you can play around with like doing furry brows. But I do like the check mark technique. It's usually my go-to. In case you missed it earlier. But now she's like friendly. She looks normal. <laughs> oh, you know what I mean? Yeah, the tweaks, like don't be afraid to just screw around and see what happens to them. Okay, so let's move on with our lives because I haven't even gotten to what I wanted to show you, which is how to use markers. All right, so before we do anything, we have to get rid of some of this, this graphite because I've been super hazy Sharpie marker brow, brows. That's right. I've been really heavy handed this whole time. I've been working with this 0.7 lead. Alcohol markers will drag all your graphite around. So that's my tip number one is to actually erase. Erase a bunch because this will get dragged through and it'll make everything really, really dirty. So keep it light enough that we can see it. But like, see how I have really heavy, sketchy lines here? That's not good. My, it'll just drag through. So, and this is another thing why this paper and this, this eraser combo are so fantastic. I literally just took her whole eyebrow off. Um, is that you can kind of lightly erase. I don't know, I just don't know any other eraser that kind of acts like this one does. I can even, you can, I do this a lot with my hands drawings that I teach in the drawing club. Um, I do a lot of like pouncing to get certain effects and you, I don't know any other eraser that that works. You, I can pounce and literally like lift up without smearing and it's that soft and it works that well. I love me a vanish eraser. And then it also like, this, this really heavy lines, it will take them off entirely. And like her nostrils are really dark. That's all going to get dragged, especially if you're doing Caucasian skin. You can like see every line is not so good. All right. You can use a kneaded eraser. I just, yeah, I mean, use whatever eraser you have. I just am telling you why I love this one. Use what you got. And my paper is like dirty and gross and whatever. Okay. All right, who's with me? You guys still there? This is long. This is like a this is like a full day class. All right. So first a couple words on alcohol markers. So there is a ton of brands. Okay, these are my favorite. These are my favorite skin tone brands. I'm just going to tell you straight up. Okay, so these are my favorite brands. There are, oops, there are many, 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 many brands of alcohol markers, okay? So they all work the same. So don't worry about it if you don't have these brands. I am just, okay, awesome guys. I'm glad you're still with me. Oh, Teresa, we don't, my look girl looks wonky too. Don't worry about it. Okay. Marty, I haven't even taken a shower today. Welcome to my, I wouldn't have showered if I hadn't had to be here with you, just, just to make you feel better. <laughs> so there's a lot of awesome brands. They all work the same. I'm just going to show you my favorites. Um, and I, because I draw so many faces and I teach so many faces, I'm going to start with talking about skin tones. So the best, in my opinion, my favorite brands of skin tones are number one, Kovex but they're super expensive, so don't go out and buy them. Number two, Oh Hoo Hoo's. Number three, oh, that's a tough one. I really like these Spectrum Noir ones. I'm gonna give them three because they're so juicy and they have a brush nib, so they're gonna have to win. And then number four, Arteza. This is just my, this is just my opinion. And I'm gonna write these out here so there's no mistake. All right, so this is an order of my favorites. And I'll tell you why really quickly. So oh, this is Copix. The reason I like them for skin tones is you, there's like 57 shades, what? So they have this amazing brush nib. Yes, Windsor Newton are fantastic, but they don't have a ton of skin tones. 
and then chisel. Okay, so Copics, and I'm just talking skin tones right now. Yeah, the Spectrum Noirs are super juicy. Um, I need a fine liner. Ooh. Where am I? Which one is this? I love these fine liners. Too. All right, so this is Copic. Copic. And the sketch is my favorite. Boom. So that's my number one. This is just my opinion. You can use what you want. But they are very expensive. So my second choice, if you can't get Copics, Again, grain of salt, just my, and I love these. They see how they also have this brush nib. So these are just like the Copics because they have a brush nib and they have a chisel. And so do, well, the Spectrum Noirs Illustrator Pack has a baby brush nib and a little bullet nib. Okay. Yeah, Donna, Winnie, if you don't have it, that's okay. And then here's the Arteza, which has the bullet nib and the chisel nib, okay? And again, there's a million brands, so you might have a different brand of these all together, but at least you can kind of know what to look for or pull out your brand and see how they compare. Okay, so Ohuhu's are the most equivalent to the Copics. You see that? Because they have the same chisel and they have a very similar brush. Except I find the um, Copics have like a softer, a softer brush nib, and they're also refillable. So you can just buy the refills if you run out of ink, and then that becomes more cost effective over time. But these are the Copics. I mean, these are the Ohuhus. Oh my God, did I lose my sketch? Am I doing this? Oh, there she is. I'm like, where is my drawing? Okay. So this is Ohuhu, which is a really funny sounding name. So that's a hoo hoo, but that's why I like them because they're kind of like Copic knockoffs, and those are about a dollar for one. These can be up to like eight. Okay, so that's my first two favorites. Oh, and these come in like this must have like fifty-seven skin tones. This has. They have packs of 24, 36 skin tones. Okay, number three favorite is these illustration by Spectrum Noirs. Because again, I really, really, really love me a brush nib. Now their brush nib is tiny. It's smaller than the other two, as you might have noticed. But these are pretty juicy. Um, yeah, because I love them and I don't care. <laughs> and also I have my original drawings. Um, I also don't sell my work, so it doesn't matter to me if they fade. Um, and also I have like my, I have the drawings that I did for my original books, like way back when I published my first how to draw fun fat faces um in 2015 and there's they still look like the day i drew them so they they definitely aren't light fast but they also don't fade like crazy either um so this is the illustrator by spectrum noir and but these um let's see these are spectrum noir I think these are more about, these are about $2 each, and but they only come in 12 colors. And this is, again, kind of why these are my one, two, and three favorites, because they each have things that are, like, good and bad about them. Yeah, Windsor and Newton are, are amazing as well. I have those as well, but, again, I can't find any good skin tone packs for those. So I'm just kind of talking skin tone right now. And then um, Arteza, the Windsor Newton watercolor markers, I am obsessed with, they are gorgeous. Awesome, all right, so this is Arteza. And I like Arteza because they have a 36 skin tone pack. And these are about, how much are these ones? I think these are less than a dollar each, if I remember correctly. So if you love, if you love color 
and like having choices and you don't have a big budget, I would go with the Arteza. Oh, you do, Beth? How many how many um, skin tone colors do they have in Windsor Newton? I should, I'll buy some so I have them in my set. I have a bunch, but I don't have any skin tones. Um, I would love to know. <clears throat> oh, thanks, Robin. So these are kind of my favorite brands, their price breakouts, and then kind of what, what you get. So to help with this, because I've done a, so much marker work, I do also 12. Oh, that's awesome, Beth. How much are they? I would love to know. Sorry, Beth, I'm like putting you on a <laughs> on the spot right now, but I super appreciate the uh the information oh copix also has like a six pack they have a six pack um i do use water-based like tombos totally totally yeah i love them but they work like, completely differently so and this is kind of going along with um this series that i'm teaching right now like we're in the middle of this fairy workshop and that's why i'm doing this specifically for my fairy workshop students because this project is coming up on Friday and then also this is the bonus that you get if you sign up to the drawing club but I just teach a lot of drawing a lot of lessons are I teach in these yeah the Copic six pack is great um but it also is about $36 and it's not enough colors I find I need way more colors I like to use like this many colors <laughs> so six that's never, never satisfying to me. So I I like the bigger packs because I tend to use kind of like four to six per face. Um, so yeah, so that's kind of the rundown. And the way they work and the way that why this paper is so essential is that there's, here, I'm going to draw like a little diagram. I buy my, I only buy at Jerry's because there's one within driving distance from my house. There's one about 20 minutes away. So if I li lived closer to something else, I would probably just go somewhere else. But Amazon and Jerry's are kind of my go-tos. Amazon for obvious reasons. So here is kind of my best. I'm going to try to illustrate how alcohol markers work. Here's the paper. This is like a sideways view of the paper. So if you're working on a watercolor paper and you use your alcohol markers, here you're drawing with your alcohol markers. The ink sinks in and it will sink into your paper because the watercolor paper is made to absorb all of your ink. So it kind of like disappears into your paper. So the alcohol is is what your pigments for all your markers are, are carried in the alcohol solution. So here's like your pigments that are floating around. And this is why you don't need to store Copics um, horizontally because it doesn't rely on gravity. So they're all just floating around in here. So when you use watercolor paper, all of the pigment gets settled down into the paper. Okay, when you use Bristol or this hammer mill paper, which is my favorite, um, this is the best way that I can think to describe it. The, it doesn't get absorbed. It all stays up here, okay? So what happens is that the pigments, the pigments are here floating around. The alcohol then evaporates and it leaves behind only just the pigments on the paper. Okay, so you have the alcohol. And here the alcohol just gets sunk, sinks down. And we want the alcohol to dissipate so that the pigments are left behind, which is why if you have another color, so say you have this and this, the, the reason why these blend so awesome on this paper, okay, is because it's all kept like a, on like a shelf. It's all here. So if I go in and add a pink and this, this will get all re-wet, it re-wets these other pigments that have already been laid down. All these pigments have a little party and they all kind of blend together. And again, the, the alcohol goes up and the pigments settle lovingly along this surface, okay? If you introduce another color on top of your watercolor paper, it just sinks down again. And you don't have any interaction, like these particles aren't inspired to move around and to blend, so you don't get any blending at all, okay? 
So marker paper, that's a great question. Marker paper, I don't understand whatsoever because it bleeds. <laughs> I don't know, I hate it and I refuse to use it. I've tested it a million brands and I don't understand it. I think it's just a marketing, I think it's just a marketing angle to be frank. And they're like, oh, marker paper goes with this. It's very expensive. It does bleed though. And I don't find it blends well and it bleeds. So it ruins the papers underneath. So that's why I only recommend Bristol or a hammer mill. Um, so great question. So watercolor and alcohol markers um, don't mix at all. They don't interact whatsoever. That's a fantastic question, however, because I'm so glad you asked it. So this is serious. <laughs> I'm going to switch my camera for this, actually. That's such a good question. Okay. The reason that I'm going to switch my camera is I like, look at me when I'm talking about this. Okay. Because a lot of people use Sharpie to outline their faces or they'll, you, they'll like take their drawing that we just did and they'll outline it in Sharpie and then they'll color with alcohol markers. And then guess what happens? Oh, the Sharpie bleeds into the face. So when I was first teaching, I noticed that and I was like, oh, crap. So I just got really good at like avoiding the outline of my Sharpies. But Sharpies are alcohol based markers. So they're made to blend with the alcohol based solutions in your alcohol markers. So hot tip, hot tip. This is a big tip, you guys. When you're doing your outlines, use markers that are specifically pigment or water-based and you will have no bleed, okay? So, so um, watercolor papers, uh, so hold on, but I'll get, I'll get to that question next. Okay, so yes, you can use them effectively. They will not blend together. Okay, so they won't blend, they won't even like notice each other. So there, you can combine them in really cool ways, um, but especially just, and that's kind of another lesson for another time, but the coolest takeaway is that for outlining, you can outline before or after in a non-alcohol-based marker, like these Molotos are, um, I think they're, yeah, they're water-based pigment, um, they won't interact, and then you will have no bleed, it's huge. So watercolor markers on hammer mill also won't, well, you can just use them dry and then they'll just work like regular markers. However, the magic with watercolor markers is adding water to make them activate and turn into watercolors. And the hammer mill paper is, the, is, is kind of just as bad for watercolor markers. It's, that's like the inverse of the Bristol and the, I'm getting so confused. You can't use them with water. No, here's my long, there's my quick answer. No, you cannot. <laughs> you need water, you need watercolor paper to work with water. All these papers, and that's why I always start off every lesson with like, make sure you're on the right paper because those papers are specifically formulated to get, to make your products work correctly with the exception of marker paper, which should just never exist. It's like a waste of money. It's, it's a marketing ploy, I'm convinced. So no watercolor markers, watercolor paper only. I hope that makes sense. Um, mom, 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 mom. Yes, you should always identify which markers people are talking about so that you do know what you're talking about. But I'm I'm doing this whole demo for my Fun Fab Theory students and we are gonna be working specifically with uh, alcohol markers. And that's what my demo is specifically for today. Mixed media paper, um, I don't use for anything because I'm either working wet or dry. So mixed media paper is, neither to me personally i don't spend money on it because i i don't understand what category like watercolor paper is so good at being watercolor paper mixed media paper is like mm, not that good at being watercolor paper so i only use watercolor paper when i'm using when i'm doing mixed media painting watercolors anything with liquid and then if i'm doing anything dry again if i'm using markers i use my hammer mill or if i use regular drawing things um i just don't use water i just don't use it but you can use it I wouldn't use it though for real liquidy applications. I, I think it's inferior to watercolor paper, but you can you you can paint with like acrylics on it. Um, I think it's like, it's just kind of like, yeah, just 
Um, you can draw on it for sure. There's no downside to it. I just feel like I don't, I just feel like watercolor paper or not watercolor paper and mixed media is kind of like Meh, for me personally, kind of in between, you know what I mean? But just good for journaling. You can do collage and then paint on top. But again, like I just like watercolor paper. I just think it works better. That's just my humble opinion. And these are just my opinions and my experience, but if you love it, then definitely use it. Um, what about Ohu paper that came with the markers? So I have an Ohu journal and it's awesome. And the paper, yes, because they're specifically made for markers. And it is just like Bristol and it's just like this hammer mill. Yes, I have. And, and if, by the way, if I haven't tested something, I won't tell you my opinion on it. I'm only talking about things that I personally have tried and tested. Um, oh, great question. Do not use gesso with any alcohol-based anything. Alcohol markers need to be like baby. They're not for any sort of mixed media work unless they're on the right paper. You can put some colored pencils on top. You can put some ink to on top, but do not put them over gesso. Gesso will totally destroy them. So I'm only talking about water. I'm only talking about alcohol markers here. Gesso is a, is a whole nother conversation for all the mixed media people. And Gesso is amazing, but it's really a base for paint. So you're not, you shouldn't be prepping your paper with it for markers, although you can use water soluble markers on top of it and then activate them with water. That is acceptable for sure. Um, yeah. But you can also, yeah, but it also depends on the brand. Like there's super cheap watercolor paper also. So I don't think it's necessarily cheaper. Um, can you use a medium on watercolor paper and use alcohol markers? I would not. Nope. Like I said, they really just need to be babied. They just need their paper. They're just, they need to be babied a little bit. Those are great questions. Yeah, Jeanette, I, I do agree. It is basically watercolor paper light, but I've done like side by side, like I'll do the same. I do this a lot in my mixed media society. Like I'll demo this kind of stuff so that like people know what works so that they don't have to go try them. Like I will do the same project on watercolor paper that I do on mixed media paper, like the same supplies, same projects. And I just find that my watercolors behave better on watercolor paper, if that makes sense. Um, yes, I agree, Tracy, but then these are all, that's also just, I agree, Tracy, but that's also just my opinion. And also like, there's no rules. You can do whatever you want. I'm not the, I'm not the marker police. You guys can do whatever you want. Um, oh, that's so funny. I tried alcohol makers on mixed media paper. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's not good. <laughs> it's not good. I know. I totally know. Um, what is the name of the black water base marker? Oh, what alcohol markers do I use? Um, I just went over those. These are my favorites. This whole list that I just created. Copic sketches are my favorite. I know. And I didn't have them for years and years and years. I used Spectre Noir for a long time. Um, it just depends on your budget. And it is taking me like six years to build up my Copics collection and only because I'm a professional artist so I can like justify that as because it's my job I would not recommend running out and grabbing all the Copics they're a million dollars I mean it's taking me like multiple Christmases and receiving them as presents and like also investing them if I'm launching a new course and I have the money to spend like I just don't want like the I worked in these for years and totally successfully so don't feel like any you never feel like you need to run out and, and get the the whole um yes yes and we are coloring today i just wanted to make sure um make sure i didn't sorry Anne. she's like stop talking let's go <laughs> okay i'm going thank you okay i'm going where were we okay i just want to mention though quickly i do i made this guide which compares ohuhu's artesas and copics and it has the equivalents i have this free guide all this kind of freebie stuff it's all in the fun fab drawing club when you join all the i have a million of these little resource extra goodies this is also in the fun fab fairies workshop classroom 
which anybody can still join, but this compares all of them. So it's like, if I'm working in Copix, you know which of the other brands that you can grab. All right, um, I do not use blenders. I just use light colors and I will show you how that works and why I don't use blenders right now. Okay, oh, that's not what I wanted. All right, let me switch. Yes, we're coloring. Thank you for keeping me on track. I could talk about this stuff all day long. Here we go. All right, I'm coloring. Okay, I'm doing the outline last. We're gonna get some coloring going. I have this, okay. This is my reference. I like, I picked it because I like the shading on it. Um, I have a shading guide in my How to Draw Fun Fab style book. Okay, this is also in the Fairies Workshop and it's in the Fun Fab Drawing Club as well. So. These are really common shading kind of designs. They're like shading, <laughs> shading. Um, <laughs> you guys are so funny. Sorry, I'm reading the comments. Okay, I love it. So these are these are like kind of my favorite ways to shade and I put them all in one place for you, but it's literally right out of my book and I have shading guides in all of my drawing books to help you if you're like, you're not sure, you don't have a reference, you can actually look to one of these. So this one is kind of just the opposite of, well, it's kind of like this one or this one, but in reverse. So these are my favorite. I don't like to do so much the symmetrical ones and it, see how this is just like, like a really quick rendition of something fancy. So this that's why I created these shading guides because it's like a quick reference, like, oh, okay, I put, the I put the dark areas there, done. So that's page, one of the pages from the How to Draw Fun Fab Faces book. Um, but also this is the kind of inf information you can get by using a reference. So you can literally look, and again, that's why I went in black and white, and you can see like this side is darker than this side. Can you just say that? This side is dark. This side is really highlighted and this side is really dark. So this kind of information is super useful. This is darker. This is darker under this is all dark. That is light. And you can see in black and white super clearly what is light and what is dark more easily than you can if she's in color. So that's why it's awesome to have two. So let's pick up some colors. So the first thing you gotta do is you pick your colors, whatever you have. You gotta swatch, baby. We gotta pick some colors that go together. Um, I've been using nothing but a hoo hoos lately. I kinda wanna grab something else. It doesn't really matter. Okay, so you want, a, you want minimum, minimum. You want a light, you want a medium, and you want a dark of the same shade ideally and that's why i made this guide because it has the color families this is the color family beige pink this is a free guide if you want it you can have it peach yellow light medium dark and you literally turn the page and you can be like okay oh don't even make a light brown base but Copix has all of these, so I could grab like a brick beige, and if I, I don't have that, I have Artisa's, I can know I could grab vanilla and have the same one. They have all the different families, so you, if I'm using this and you have Copix, you can grab one of those and it will match. This, my, this is on an old crappy inkjet printer that I don't have anymore, so the colors look really washed out, but I basically color swatched all of these markers for you, and that's what those are. So you need to start color swatching. So you take some of your skin tone colors and you're going to have to discover for yourself what these good ones are. So you're like, oh, I love that one. Okay, well that can be my light. Oh, I need a medium. And sometimes you're like, oh, sweet Jesus, that's ugly. I don't want that one. And you have to just kind of find out by swatching a whole bunch and you have like a reject pile, you have like a good pile and a reject pile. And then you're like, ooh, that's lovely. What is this one? I like this color fam. Well, those go nicely together. So maybe this is my light and this can be my medium. Okay, so as soon as you find like a good match, you're like, oh, oh, okay. So then you be like, okay, which one is that? Before I forget, you say that's R18 and this one is R29. Okay, 
So then you're like, okay, I got those, now I need a dark. That's kind of would go with those as well. And again, you need to just swatch. And sometimes I'll, oh, what? That, that has never happened ever in my whole life where I actually score. Thank God, because this is like three hours as it is. So this is our 26. Boom. Okay, so we have a light. We have our medium. And this can be our dark. Okay. And then if you're not sure, like, like put them together, make a little strip of color and be like, okay, does this one, that's going to be the dark. Is this really going to work? Cause you don't want to find out on your face that it's wrong. And then you're like, oh, that actually looks, you know, that is a little bit lighter. And then like blend them together, like put them over each other and under each other and just be like, okay, do they all go together? Does that make sense? Yeah, that looks fantastic. Okay. So you have, so test it alone and then test them together and just make sure that you know you got a good you got a good set. And I'm the worst at keeping track of this stuff. I always have to start over like every single time. I'm the worst. I'm like a hot mess. Um you can do it with as little as you want. I end up doing it like five or six colors all told at the end, honestly. But you can do whatever whatever makes you happy is the color that you should do and as many as you should do. There is so much crap on my paper. <laughs> it is not even funny. So I'm going to have a lot of drag because I have been using this poor girl as underlayment and I was like messing around with so much. So hold on. I just don't want to like I as much as I am being flippant and super careless, I don't want to actually make a disastrously horrific piece, you know. <laughs> There's so much graphite hanging around. Okay. So first move. The first layer is super easy. Okay. Okay. Um, no, you wouldn't want to do mix the watercolor spectrums and the alcohol because they don't blend at all. Because they, I just talked about that Audra like maybe ten minutes ago about how they don't interact with each other. That's a great question, but they don't layer. Um, so if you want them to blend, they they will layer, but they won't blend. So you can use either tip for the first layer. You can use either chisel or or brush it's totally up to do and your first layer you do the whole entire face front to bottom and you're going to work really quickly okay and you're going to work really quickly because remember i just i showed you kind of how they worked you put the markers down right and then the alcohol this is so weird because my angle of my camera i'm so sorry the alcohol dissipates and it leaves behind those pigments. So you want, in order to get a blend, you need to, I'm not loving that, I'm gonna actually go all the way over. You need to move super fast because they dry really, really quickly. So that's why markers and the juicy factor of markers is super important and working with like this one is already drying out and streaking. That's bad. I've probably already used this a bunch of times. It's running out of ink. So Copics are refillable. So if this was a Copic marker, I'd be like, oh no, but that's okay. I'm gonna have a refill. Every other brand so far is not refillable. I would just have to throw this away and I can't buy it individually. So that's a downside of some of these other brands. I don't know why it's juicing up now as I do the neck, but you do the whole entire face, okay? And you do a move quickly and you just like literally get all the, all the paper down, okay? <clears throat> what do I use under your paper? Nothing, because this paper is amazing and it doesn't bleed, which is why I um, use it. Yeah, you have way more, the more colors you have, the more dimension you have. So that's the, um, that's the first one. All right. So now maybe you're like, Oh my God, she's so streaky though. It looks so weird. Like what about all those streaks? Like, cause look, 
Okay, because it's got like super juicy dried out. I actually have, I have the 18 set and the, what number is this, or 18. So someone was asking about the colorless blender. I don't use or like a colorless blender because it's really helpful to have the pigments to help you mix. Remember I was doing the demonstration about how they work? and you have the two pigments interacting and blending. So with the colorless blender, you just have the just the alcohol solution with no pigment. So there's kind of no blending. You're just simply re-wetting the first layer. And I, you kind of need, in my opinion, you need a pigment to get to have any blending or else you're just getting it wet, which isn't any blending at all. So what I do instead of using a colorless blender to fix things like this is I will use any shade or lighter, but some pigment, like I specifically want a pigment because that's like where the blending magic goes, um, where it comes from. So this one I know is a super light and I know it's lighter. So what I'm gonna do is this is a warm gray, although it's a really nice like skin tone. I know it's lighter than this first color that I put down just because I've used it so many times before. And what I'll do is I will go in the opposite direction. So I went this way, this time I will go, and it doesn't matter which nib you use. Um, you can kind of get more down with a chisel. I only use the chisel for the first layer or any sweeping layers like that. So now I will go in this direction. All right, and alcohol markers are like brave, badass, bold things. Like make no mistake, they are like not for the faint hearted, but if you have some kind of, and this is like, if you have some techniques under your belt, it's not as scary if you can just like attack it head on and you know what to do. So I'm going in the opposite direction now, okay? as I go to the same direction as before. Okay, and it's a little dicey there because I like had to start over, but already like the streakiness is kind of calming down. And again, I was going horizontally before, so this time I'm gonna go vertically. So it's kind of like mowing the lawn. You know when you mow the lawn and then you switch directions the next week so the lines don't show or you're vacuuming your carpet, it's the same exact philosophy, okay? And then all of a sudden that kind of filled in all the same color or lighter opposite direction, Terry. Yes, that's right. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, the hammer mill is, it's a cover stock. Um, okay, so that's kind of one. So let's get some shading started. So again, we have our, this is, I'm only using this for kind of where to go with the darks and the lights. So then I'm gonna take the next one. I can't remember already, because I'm the worst. Which one did I find? Two, this is why I always have to like, make sure you label it. Two R29, okay. So I'm gonna look at my reference, and I'm going to say what parts are lighter or darker than the part I just put down. We're gonna pretend this is the same tone, even though that's peach and that's pink, it doesn't matter. What is, and this is why I also do not get picky about which colors we're using because you can just grab any shades that kind of go, what is a vacuum? A vacuum cleaner, a Hoover. <laughs> so then you, this is where you're literally gonna draw. So this part is dark right here, all right? So that means I'm gonna draw right here, boop. Okay, so scary, right? It's not scary, just put it in. Don't ask questions, just put it in. Okay, what else is dark? Well, this here is right here by her eye. All right, um, right, let's do that. So there's her eye. I'm gonna do that. And then look at this, this part is dark too. All right, I'm gonna go there with my next shade. Whee! We already tested it out so we know it goes. And look at this, under the mouth, that's super dark. All right, so I'm under her nose looks, oh, look at this, under there looks dark. I'm gonna do that. And that under her nose looks pretty dark. So we can do that. There's also, this is like a weird shape on in there. And then it's like between here is dark. What else? 
here is dark, here is dark. You literally draw, and this is why, this is where references can be humongous because it gives you all this information. You don't have to guess. You're like, oh, I don't know. I just did whatever my sheet said. Whatever was going on in my chick's face is what I drew. All right, now this side too. This is super dark. So I'm gonna draw under here. And you can go, well, it actually fades, but whatever. Okay. And then look at this. Oh, I drew right on my reference. So this looks like it's here, but then it kind of like fades out a little bit. So I'm not gonna go all the way, but then right there in her nose, it's kind of dark. And some of it is dark from her makeup. Some of it is dark from the shadow. Actually doesn't matter why it's dark. Just draw where it's dark. Don't think too hard about it. And then here it's kind of dark under her, like there. And it's, it's literally as simple as that. Like where is it dark and where is it light? And that's where you go. I think usually by your hairline, but it's cut off. So I'm gonna, I know from experience that it's shaded by the hair. And I'm gonna put some there as well. And like her ear is shaded. Okay, and now you're like, oh, it's so ugly. Like she looks like a graphic mess and a monster and blah, 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 blah. But like, guys, chill, super normal. Um, and we'll get there, okay? So then we are gonna go for our last, this is the darkest. I'm just gonna do three, three shades. Okay, every time you go darker, you do smaller area, just FYI. So if this was this big, we're gonna go inside of it so that there's always the other part showing as well. So for example, here, we're gonna make that area smaller. And I'm just gonna leave it like that. Now, water watercolors are a lot like alcohol markers in that when you first put them on, they're darker and then they kind of fade a little bit. So don't freak out when you first start and it looks dark, that's super normal. And then it kind of fades, it's neat. And that's really dark right there too. But then so is this whole side actually. So again, this area is gonna be a little bit smaller than the first area so that I can see the gradation right here. Boop. See how this, I still see the colors before. Oh, she's got some dark under here too. She's got a little eye drama going. And then usually under here is really dark. Now I'm losing my outlines because my I erased my pencil so it wouldn't smear. So don't worry, I'll put that back. Okay. And then inside there is always pretty dark. All right, so now you're like, Karen, though, she looks like a crazy graphic mess. All right, this is where we go back and we do, we are doing the blending. So all you need to do is go back to one of your lighter colors. So remember, like, remember when I was doing, like, filling in some things? That was that warm gray. So I'm going to grab that again. You can do this a million times. You can take your lighter colors and you can simply use them as the colorless blender is made to use, but I think falls really short and just simply run it over everything else that is there. And it helps to blend all your colors together. And you're not even, because it's still the same color as underneath, you're not adding any color. And again, I really find that I, it makes a big difference to use the pigments to blend all of this together. And if you're if you're new to shady, see how I'm just like swiping it everywhere? Because it's again, you want those pigments and you want the alcohol solution to all be best friends with one another and mix around on your paper rather than just getting it wet. And as you can see, they kind of start to like fade into one another, all right? And that's all I'm gonna do. That's like basic 
So then what we're going to do is make her complete by like just finishing up her thing. So let's do her eyes. So again, everything I do, hair, eyes, lips, color, skin, doesn't matter. You want at least two shades always. The more shades, the better always for what you're drawing. So I'm going to do the eyes. I'll start with a really light color. This is the color I made for the chick's hair for the bonus lesson, the early bird. Um, her irises are super different sizes. Yeah, the eyebrows will come back. <laughs> Don't worry, I'll be back. So again, you wanna use different colors. Ooh, she doesn't even have pupils yet. It all goes on at the end. So I'm just shoving a bunch of colors together that are different shades. I might even change that. If you want to draw your eyebrows on, you can, but I actually like to make them look hair color and I don't know what hair color I'm gonna use for her again. So you can pop your eyebrows back in however you want them. You can also sketch some pupils in, but I like to, um, I like to do my outlines kind of pretty dark. So let's do the hair lesson because someone was asking me how to get long strands. I'm just going to use these Spectrum Noir markers because they're next to me. Again, you always want to pick. You want to pick three shades, whatever it is you're drawing. It does not matter if you're drawing a chair. Or, ooh, actually, I don't like these ones. These are old. I'll just keep using my ohuhus. Ooh, nice. Okay, so that's something really dark. <laughs> so you want three shades, every single thing, three shades. Is that lighter? That is a little bit lighter. Is that lighter than that? Yes. That might be fine. Always test, test, test. Oh, this look good. Oh, that's the same color. That's funny. All right. Um, this is fine enough for an example. All right. All right. So here we go. So again, three shades, every single thing, three shades, light, medium, dark. So here I always go light to dark. It's kind of fun if you want to get fancy is to have like a highlighted section. So I'm going to say this is my highlighted section. And I talk about this in my how to draw. Um, and find your style book. So I'm gonna go highlight here and I'm gonna highlight here. So I'm gonna use the side of my brush because it makes drawing hair so flipping fast. You see how fast that was? So I always start at the top and I'm gonna head towards my highlighted area and that's gonna lift up my brush, okay? So I'm gonna go whoop and then lift it up. And because I'm using, I'm like almost I'm like almost totally parallel to my paper. It's like super fast. And then I'm going to come up from the bottom and we're going to flink it up. This is getting super fancy. Okay. Now you don't want to have a lot of little strokes like this. You want it to appear seamless. So either wherever you start from, make a continuous line like the whole way. So if I wasn't getting fancy with a highlight, I would drag my marker all the way down. Okay, so wherever I do start, you wanna keep going until you run out of paper so that your lines are really, really continuous. And someone was just asking me that earlier. Okay, but see how I'm using the side of that brush nib? That's where the brush nib magic comes in because you get this tapered line that you can't get with a bullet or a chisel nib. Okay, I just I just swiped on it, but see how bad that looks because I started here. You don't want to start there. You want to start off the paper. So you're either starting way up at the root or you're starting off the paper. Okay, so now you take your second darkest because right, we always use three shades. That's the darkest. So I always test on a separate sheet before I begin 
I think this is going to be really too dark, but I've been live for so long. So now it's just like the skin. You're going to leave more. You're going to leave the original lighter color exposed and do this in a smaller area. Okay. So this, again, I'm starting at the top and it looks crazy because it's too dark. So I'll probably have to go and find a, um, a in-between shade. And this happens all the time though. So don't freak out if you're like, oh my God, it's like it's fine there's another shade just go find one later the closest two hairs to her face should be the darkest so actually you want to make because that will make her face really pop so make sure those are dark but again you're doing continuous lines and you're going to make them in um fewer areas than the first shade and try to be continuous about your line. This is like a hair super secret cheat, cheat way to do super fast fun hair. Okay, so we're swiping up. It gets that lovely little blend, bent, blended line. I cannot talk. Okay, so we have up here. And again, try not to do those short little jerky strokes, but try to do long strokes like this. And again, we'll look better. I'm going to have to find an in-between shade because it's just too, the contrast is too great. And then here's the super dark shade, which again, you're going to go even less than the first two because it's the darkest, but you're only going to run the darkest by the face to make the face pop. Shorter strands. This is just like my random fun fab style. Okay, and now let's go find that shade that's in between. And this kind of thing, as I'm sure you know, if you've done any art, sometimes you just have to like problem solve. Like, oops, I need an in-between shade. Um, and this is also why I like working with a lot of other brands too, because sometimes one brand doesn't have all the shades that you even need. I'm gonna grab my Copics. And see if I can find one that would be a good in between. Whoa, different color family. Nope. Um, not quite. I'm missing a thing up today. Sometimes you have to test like a million colors. That's just the way it goes. Does, have any, does anyone have any questions while I'm watching these millions of colors out. Sorry, I should have had this planned, but I was taping something else this morning. Um, all right, well, I'm just gonna do this one just to keep it short. So this one I would kind of, cause I'm trying to like pull the colors together. I would do this so I could see it uh, a little bit as much oop, <laughs> as we're doing the first one. Again, you just keep your long strokes, use the side of your marker and you can get hair done super fast, super fast. And just keep your strokes long and use the side of your brush. All right. So her eyebrow colors are usually used the same as her hair, but then I also use, um, she'll really come together when I do the outline. So here's the, like, her eyebrow gets chopped off in her hair. And I usually do draw kind of more individual strands. And then for lips, again, I to do the best lip that I could do, I would use three colors. But again, in the interest of time, I am going to just probably do two because we're getting. Oh, thank you. Tara is texting me. Don't forget the giveaways. Yes, the giveaways too. I will post the name in the group afterwards. So that can be its own thread. So here is you. Here's the wrong color that I'm using. <laughs> going 89 miles an hour um let's see she does have like a lot of there's a lot happening in her lips but I just kind of want to bang this out I know I didn't even give the winners giveaway 
And then sometimes, to be honest, if I'm drawing with a color and I'm like, oh, that's so pretty, I will maybe just dance it around a little bit if I like it. All right, so we have all that. Now the outlining part. So if you did the outlining part first, you can, um, and hopefully you use like a water-based thing so it wouldn't bleed. Uh, my favorite thing to outline is using this Pentel pocket brush. I'm really obsessed with it. It's really difficult to use, however. It takes a lot of practice, and sometimes I do really wrong marks with it. So to do a slower, steadier outline, um, you can practice with just a regular fine liner marker. Um, so, yeah. So I like this. I like this for the... Um, I love it for eyelashes. So I'll try to zoom in. So it makes really great eyelashes. <laughs> I get a little crazy with the eyelashes. Um, and it's a little bit hard to use because it's like such a, what's it called? Brush, it's a brush nib. And, and you don't have to outline your pieces either. Um, for a long time, I really kind of fought being an outliner, but I just love it. And so I just decided like, nope, I'm just gonna outline my pieces and that's okay. Try not to drag your hand through your outlines. I do that all the time as well, which I highly recommend not doing. Okay, but you want, I can take this. I made that iris a little bit bigger. I can color that in with a green. But um, it makes, it has a nice little tip on there that works nicely for here. And then it's also super nice for, you don't have to draw any of the nose bridging, but you can add it if you want to. And then I kind of like just using it to dot some extra hair strands. Like it kind of gives it um, like an artsy fartsy look, drying up a little bit. And so just trying like individual strands on top kind of helps it all come together super quickly. And then you can add, if you haven't, if you need some little highlights and you want to, you can take your little paint pen and add some little sparkles in her eyes. Okay, and her lips and her chins and her little there. So you can kind of pepper highlights around wherever you like. Her eyes look a little incomplete because she doesn't have any like um, just little fun finishing touches for eyes. You can put like a peach color here and here. Um, you can also, eyes usually have like some shading to them as well. I should have some grays out and I don't, so I'm just going to use some skin color. So this is like that, this is like a light skin color. I'm gonna make that. So her eyes look a little weird because they're so light. And then I also made this one larger. There we go. And you can do all sorts of little, <clears throat> you can make like the top lid darker. If you want to make it look like she has some more makeup on, you can just kind of fatten that. Fatten that up. The bottom. And kind of change her that way. So I sorry, I know I did that quick at the end, but I feel like it was going on for a million and two thousand years. So so as you can see, when it when you finally like have all the finishing touches, it's kind of like you can barely even see the shading in the face, right? <laughs> So, um, 
So yes, this was the reference, but again, I was only using the reference for eye shape, which turned out to be a really bad idea. She looked like a drug addict. Um, and the shading patterns on the face is really the only reason I was um, pulling from the reference and then some of her hair as well. So hopefully that gives you a good um, idea of, uh, oh, that's a great question. Does pencil usually erase? No, not at all. I actually don't even think that, um, switching my camera. No, it doesn't. I don't think it comes off at all, actually. It almost get and the same thing happens with watercolor. Oh, I've been on so long, my light's turned off. <laughs> um, same thing with watercolor. If you watercolor over graphite, you cannot erase it anymore. So that's a great question. So I hope that that helps. Oh my gosh, yes, we have we have winners for a giveaway as well. So if you want to draw, John, join the drawing club. Doors are open today. They only open two times of the whole year, so they're open now. You can go to awesomeartschool.com to join. And here are the winners. We have Karen Hewitt won the gift card, twenty five dollars to Amazon or PayPal Cash. Debbie Hendrickson was the winner of the um, art book of her choice. There's 18 art books to choose from. And Jody Ann Beck was the winner of the journals. And I have a new journal that just came to me yesterday. Um, and it's actually, this one is a full size eight and a half by 11. Um, and it's lined with lined paper inside. And then there's a whole bunch of um, every 10 pages, there is a fantasy themed um, photos, photograph. And this is now officially my favorite one. It's so pretty, but it's all lined. So this one just came and it's called <gasps> Ruminations. <laughs> but that is now um, an option too. If you win one of the journals, which Jody and Beck won the one of the journals, that is now one that you can choose from as well. Does graphite erase better on hot, hot press paper? Um, no, I don't think so. One, it depends on your eraser that you're using. And two, it also depends on the lead of the pencil. Um, like these really like grind into paper, but my, my vanish eraser will take out off all of it. So I think that, no, I think this hammer mill paper erase is amazing. Um, yeah, about the same as cold press, Jeanette. I agree. I agree. Yeah, so today's fairy class is already been released. It was a release at 8 a.m. this morning. There's two more days of classes. And then if you join the drawing club by May 1st, you also get the bonus lesson, which teaches you how to draw that same exact fairy reference, but from scratch, the three quarter portrait version of her. So that's super fun. So does anyone have any more questions before I go? Because I've been on for a million years and I have to pee so bad. Does anyone else have to pee? So bad? <laughs> um, all right, who has questions? And then I gotta go because that was, um, yeah, we covered a lot, but hopefully that explains how alcohol markers work, why they work the way they do, why paper is so ex expensive, oh, important, not expensive, the hammer and paper is cheap, cheap, cheap. Um, yeah, how to shade. Um, how to pick your shades and all sorts of things that we went on today. So who else has a question before I go? Someone is messaging me. What is this little? Um, yes. Okay. Awesome. I'm getting all messaged. Don't forget the giveaways. That was the giveaway. Okay. Um, is there a switch from monthly to annual? Yes, yes. And now is the only time that you can do that. That's a great question. Yeah, you just want to cancel your monthly so you're not billed twice. You can go to your, it's super easy to cancel your membership. Um, I have a video if you need help with that. And then, or I'm welcome to do it on your behalf. And then you can sign up now and you can get your free book and save two months as well. Yes. Um, oh, good. I'm so glad. Oh, you're so, you're so welcome. Have a great day. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, one more second. I will see. <laughs> Tara's like, sorry, I had a dentist appointment. I'm like, no, I'm sorry. I chatted for so long. Um, but I just want to make sure because we still have two days till the, the marker drawing. So that gives anybody, if they want to run out and grab anything or switch out anything, 
um, they can. Thank you. I'm so glad you enjoyed it, Lindy. Thanks for hanging out with me today. Anyone else? Yeah, yearly is a really good deal. If, um, just because you save so much money. Plus, you get your free book, which is awesome. Um, Giovanna. I love you, girlfriend. I need the Google Translate, and I don't have that um, up on my screen right now. Oh, thank you. Yeah, it's like three clicks to cancel. And if anyone wants to join for the monthly and they decide they don't like it, there's no contracts or anything. You can just cancel at, at any time. It's very, very friendly. Um, yo, good. I'm so glad you guys were hanging out with me today. I'm sorry that was so long. I just wanted to make sure that like everybody was covered and felt good and educated about the lessons that were coming up. And I teach more than just markers in the Fun Fab Drawing Club. Um, I teach mostly in graphite, actually, because it's all about like how to draw things is always my first priority. Um, but I do mess around with Tombow water soluble markers there. I do have watercolor over a few things. So I do like to introduce other things, um, but markers are just a ton of fun. And I also want the reason I wanted to give you a bonus lesson was that if anyone did, if if you were registered for the fairy workshop and you did buy anything, I wanted you to be able to use your markers again, like now. <laughs> so that's kind of that's another reason why I wanted to do that. You're so welcome. Um, and I will, oh, Jenna, you're the best with your Google Translate. I will be uploading this to YouTube and reposting this in the Facebook group and on my page in case anyone wants to watch it again. Um, yeah, the replay will also be in the fairy, in the fairy classroom. It'll be on the Facebook group. You'll have lots of opportunities. All of the replays for um, all of these days lives are in the fairy workshop if you if you're watching this and you signed up for that but it'll be in the facebook group as well and if you're not in the facebook group come and join just search awesome art school and that's the facebook group all right um yeah all right well without further ado thanks for hanging out with me come join the fun fab drawing club or the mixed media society if painting is more your thing and you guys have an awesome day thanks for hanging out with me